One thing I love to do is find new flat earthers. You can almost guarantee that a new flat earther will pop up on YouTube every once in a while, making the same tired arguments that have all been debunked a hundred times over. Today, we look at one of the most overconfident new flat earthers I've seen in a long time. And he's talking sundials. <laughs> Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, if you haven't already seen the new 15 degree drift wall clock, Simon Dan wall clock, it is in the Simon Dan shop right now. This unique wall clock will allow you to track every hour on Earth in 15 degree segments. Sticking it to the flat earthers just by telling the time. It's like a secret code that all normal people understand. I'll leave a link for this in the description. Take a look. It is a conversation starter as well as a wall clock. Thank you all very much. Right, on with today's video, which is from With The Sun 33. Who thinks that sundials prove a flat earth? This should be good. Away we go. I'm gonna take advantage of this beautiful, beautiful sunny day, and I'm gonna make a sundial on the ground, and I'm gonna show everybody how a sundial, number one, proves that our time is completely messed up. They have manipulated our timeline. Number two, it proves that the earth is flat. And number three, it's just plain straight up awesome, so. Well, that is a lot of claims, my friend. I think we can all agree that number three is good. Sundials are awesome. But I think you're gonna have your work cut out for points one and two. Let me show you this and please, I encourage you to make one on your own. You can do it with sidewalk chalk and do it on a sunny day. I suggest maybe today if your, your area of this uh, world is sunny. So check this out. First things first, why does the sundial prove that they messed with our timeline? It doesn't, but please do have an attempt at telling us why. Well, for one thing, for a sundial to work, you want noon, 12 o'clock noon, facing in a north direction. In my opinion, it should be zero degrees due north. That is the direction it should be facing in because Polaris is only separated by the north celestial pole by 0 0.7 degrees. So please read and check your facts before you fact check this video. Okay, I will do. So first off, 12 p.m. noon is not always solar noon. Solar noon is of course when the sun reaches its highest point in the sky. Here in the UK today, that's around 1 p.m., not 12. So you need to account for that when telling your time with a sundial. Secondly, I don't know why you're showing a compass there. True north is not the same as magnetic north. Unless, of course, you know how to adjust for magnetic declination. And finally, this, of course, is all irrelevant because if you live in Australia, then using true north will be of no use at all, will it? In the Southern Hemisphere, the gnomon, or part of the sundial that casts the shadow, must be aligned to true south. If you want your sundial to work, you have to set it, take out your phone, get the compass app, and you have to set it to about in between like 21 and 27 degrees north. But, but depending on how accurate your compass is, if you have a real compass, use that. If you have a phone, use that. But compasses are not all the same and they are not all accurate. So you are adjusting for magnetic declination. Okay. But the thing is that depends very much on your location. For example, depending on where you are in the UK, you only need to adjust for between one or three degrees. Incidentally, you do realize that you're aligning your sundial, which you think proves a flat earth, by using a magnetic field which can only be produced by a spherical planet with a core. Just wanted to make sure we all check that irony there. So after you set your compass or in your in my case the the rocks what i did was this i'll show you so i took rocks i wrapped some paper around them and put the numbers in i have 12 o'clock one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock all the way around now what you need to do to find true to find your north to put your compass is you use a pole right and i did um 40 inches between 12 and 6 and between 9 and 3. You use a pole and you use your, you put your compass to the pole and you you turn it until you get to you know the it's going to be in between 21 and 27 degrees again depending on your compass. 
but your pole is stood up vertical, perpendicular to the Earth's surface. Your pole needs to be parallel to Earth's rotational axis. So basically, the angle that your pole should be at should match your latitude. Unless you're sitting on the North Pole right now, your sundial won't work properly. Now, I did 40 inches between 12 and 6. So you want 40 inches also between 9 and 3, okay? And the way to tell how you're gonna, you know, build a cross if you don't know how to build a perfect T, you wanna measure between 12 and 6 and find your center point, which is 20 inches, and then put a marker there, okay? Or you can just tie a piece of chalk to a piece of string 20 inches long and draw a circle. Seems a bit easier, doesn't it? So this stone is my center point and it marks 20 inches in between six and 12 and in between nine and three. It's really, really simple. So you can do this with chalk. Please go outside and do it. But check this out. You got 12 o'clock, six o'clock. Here's your clock, nine o'clock. And right now it is actually 10 o'clock on the clock itself. So this is 100% accurate. And you could leave this here if you had nice weather and it's not going to change. It's going to stay that way every day. It's, this is a clock now, right? And it's very, 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 very simple to build. It is simple to build if you build it correctly. I would suggest that your clock is going to start drifting from the actual time as the day goes on. Also, I'm assuming you haven't adjusted for the solar noon, 12 p.m. noon discrepancy and it won't go all the way round either. The sun does not trace a circle around you, unless of course you're on the North or South Pole. It usually traces an arc as it rises and sets in the sky. I really, really hope people go out and build this. Now I wanna show you how this is impossible to work on a sphere. It's impossible to work on a globe. It does not work. It only works on the flat earth model. So let me show you this. We're gonna do our perfect circle with our compass, bang. So we know where to put our center point. What, you don't measure out your circle on your paper like you did on your drive? That's disappointing. And now we're gonna go in a dark location. All right, now check this out. So here's our perfect circle. I'm not gonna bother measuring and we can figure out a perfect center. Now, they think, they tell us that the, the world is a sphere and they tell us that the sun, which is this light source, it rises in the east, right? So we'll call it here, and it settles in the west. We'll call that here. Now watch what happens with the light. You, it, they don't work. It doesn't work if the light goes overhead. That's not how a sundial works. No one is suggesting that it is under normal circumstances. However, the demonstration you gave right there is exactly how that sundial would cast a shadow on the equator during the equinox. Usually when you look at a sundial, the angle of the gnomon is set for its location. You can see that the shadow does not go all the way round because it has limitations due to the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. You are completely misunderstanding how they work. You see this? Look what happens. And if anyone, builds a sundial or knows anything about a sundial, sundials work like this. When the sun goes around the world, goes like that. What, so we all live in the North Pole, do we? What about people living in the Southern Hemisphere? You've just completely forgotten about those, have you? Sorry, my arm keeps crossing over. There we go. Look at that, it goes around. It doesn't go like this. It does not go like that. Doesn't go over. Doesn't go over. It goes, it goes around. See that? Like I said though, it only goes directly overhead like that in a very specific set of circumstances. Look at this. Around. And see that? Oh yeah. Around. Around. So I really encourage you to try this, please. Make a little circle on a table try the light it goes it has to go around because the earth that we live on it's a flat earth model so we live on a flat surface we don't live on a spinning ball going a thousand miles an hour at the equator 66,600 miles an hour around the sun and 500 yeah 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 i've heard all this nonsense before the simple thing 
is this my friend. You do not understand how to build a sundial. Therefore, you have misunderstood how they work. And you've totally hashed up your flat earth explanation because of it. I challenge you to build a proper model of a sundial with the pen tilted at the correct angle for your location and your torch arching along your imaginary sky at the correct angle. Then come back and tell me that it doesn't work. Wow, what a funny one that was. What do we all think about that man's attempt at building a sundial? Let me know in the comments below. And if you really do want to tell the time correctly, then why not use a 15 degree drift Simon Dam wall clock link is in the description thanks so much for watching today it is truly appreciated if you enjoyed it please do consider subscribing to the channel hitting that thumbs up too would be very very helpful and sharing as well would be hugely helpful thank you very much i've been simon and dan have yourselves a great day and i'll see you all tomorrow for another saturday session which is something slightly different see you then <laughs>